there's something strange about this Chinese spy balloon that just got shot down, and nobody seems to be talking about it. Yucca, the first of the three high-altitude shots, was prepared and launched from the flight deck of the aircraft carrier USS Boxer. All of Yucca's blast and nuclear radiation instrumentation and a portion of the thermal instrumentation were concentrated in five canisters suspended below the weapon at intervals out to 3,000 feet. These instruments were designed to be activated prior to burst time by telemetered commands. At 1125 hours on 28 April, when the Yucca balloon was released, the USS Boxer was operating about 90 nautical miles northeast of Nan Island, Bikini Atoll, maintaining a deck wind velocity of near zero. Two and one half hours later, 1440 hours, at an approximate altitude of 85,000 feet, Yucca was detonated by radio command signal. Failure of the telemeter command transmitter to activate the canister instruments prior to burst time resulted in almost complete loss of data from the balloon dragline equipment. In the 1950s, the United States government started testing nuclear devices detonated from balloons. Enter Project Yucca, the balloon nuclear detonation test as part of Operation Hard Tack. Quote, Yucca was the codename of the first unique high altitude test of a nuclear device ever carried out by a stratospheric balloon. The main goal of the United States Department of Defense and Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory was to study the effect of the detonation of a W-25 air defense warhead at high altitude as part of the developmental work of an anti-ballistic missile. This test, along with two other exoatmospheric detonations, performed using rocket-borne warheads of a megaton scale codenamed Teak and Orange, were included under Operation Newsreel as part of Operation Hardtack. As occurred in most nuclear tests, it was necessary to set up a series of monitoring stations and instrumented vehicles to retrieve the data at the moment of the explosion. The measurements of the electromagnetic pulse generated by the blast was performed by the Army Signal Research and Development Laboratory from two stations located at Wotho and Kusail, approximately 100 miles and 460 miles from Bikini, respectively. Balloon flight testing for Yucca began in 1956 at various locations in the United States, like Vernalis Naval Air Station in California, Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico, and Goodfellow Air Force Base in Texas. In all, a total of 76 balloons were launched in preparation for the event. And on the morning of April 28, 1958, the USS Boxer departed from Bikini to the launch point. After the bomb was assembled and armed, the balloon was released at 11.25. During ascent, the nuclear device was separated from the balloon at a distance of 568 feet by a hydraulic load lowering device. And the measurement instrumentation was additionally deployed along a nylon line at specific intervals totaling 3,000 feet below it. At 1250, the balloon reached a floating altitude of 85,000 feet, and finally at 1440, the nuclear device was detonated by radio command in a point located 85 miles northeast of Inuitak. The device produced a yield of 1.7 kilotons, a small amount for the standard of the times. The fact that an electromagnetic pulse is produced by a nuclear explosion was known since the very first days of nuclear weapons testing. But the magnitude of the EMP and the significance of its effects were not realized for some time, according to the data published in the final report of Hardtack, which was declassified several years later. Yucca provided the first indication in United States testing that high-altitude EMP could be more than 100 times as intense as a low-altitude EMP. So basically, what this article is saying is that the United States tested a nuclear device, a very small one at that on a balloon to measure the effects of the EMP. And what they found was when an EMP is produced or a nuclear device is detonated in high altitude, it creates a pulse that is 1,000 times stronger than the low altitude EMP. Now, what would happen if an EMP actually hit America? Well, according to this report, it doesn't look very good. 
In fact, a congressional report states that, quote, an EMP attack would kill 90% of all Americans. 90%. Quote, in a U.S. House of Representatives hearing on Thursday, members of the recently defunded EMP Commission informed Congress of the devastation an electromagnetic pulse attack could inflict on the country. In a commissioned report, former EMP Commission Chairman William Graham and its former Chief of Staff Peter Vincent Perry referred to North Korea using an EMP as a doomsday scenario. It could use its demonstrated satellite launcher to carry a nuclear weapon over the South Polar region and detonate it over the United States to create a high altitude electromagnetic pulse. The result could be to shut down the electric U.S. power grid for an indefinite period, leading to the death within a year of up to 90% of all Americans. 90% of Americans. Think about that. And what we just saw flying over our country could be a precursor to this exact scenario. On March 26, 2019, President Trump signed Executive Order 13865, coordinating national resilience to electromagnetic pulses, which establishes resilience and security standards for the U.S. critical infrastructure as a national priority initiative. EO 13865 states, quote, an electric magnetic pulse, EMP, has the potential to disrupt, degrade, and damage technology and critical infrastructure systems. Human-made or naturally occurring EMPs can affect large geographic areas, disrupting elements critical to the nation's security and economic prosperity, and could adversely affect global commerce and stability. The federal government must foster sustainable, efficient, and cost-effective approaches to improving the nation's resilience to the effect of EMPs. This is the report of the Commission to Assess the Threat to the United States from an EMP Attack. Volume 1 is from 2004. Now it's pretty long, so I'm just going to show you some of the highlights. Quote, the nature of EMP threat. High altitude EMP results from the detonation of a nuclear warhead at altitudes about 40 to 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The immediate effects of EMP are disruption of and damage to electronic systems and electrical infrastructure. EMP is not reported in the scientific literature to have direct effects on people in the parameter range of present interest. What is significant about an EMP attack is that one or few high-altitude nuclear detonations can produce EMP effects that can potentially disrupt or damage electronic and electrical systems over much of the United States, virtually simultaneous at a time determined by an adversary. Now this figure here shows a EMP detonation above the United States, above Chicago, can take out all electrical power on the east coast of the United States. And I'm not just talking about the lights shut off, I'm talking about all electrical systems are fried and permanently disabled. Each critical infrastructure in the U.S. is dependent upon other infrastructures, and it has a little diagram here showing you how every bit of this country is interlinked and relies on each other for success. All of the critical functions of U.S. society and related infrastructures, electric power, telecommunications, energy, financial, transportations, emergency services, water, food, etc., have electronic devices embedded in most aspects of their systems, often providing critical controls. Electric power has thus emerged as an essential service underlying U.S. society and all of its other critical infrastructures. Telecommunications has grown to a critical level but may not rise to the same as electrical power in terms of risk to the nation's survival. All other infrastructures and critical functions are dependent upon the support of electric power and telecommunications. Therefore, we must make special efforts to prepare and protect these two high leverage systems. Basically, what it was saying is one EMP over the United States could collapse the nation permanently. And what just happened now with this balloon should be an eye opener for everybody. Food infrastructure, quote, EMP can damage or disrupt the infrastructure that supplies food to the population of the United States. Recent federal efforts to better protect the food infrastructure from terrorist attack tend to focus on preventing small-scale disruption of the food infrastructure, such as would result from a terrorist poisoning some food. Yet an EMP attack could potentially disrupt the food infrastructure over a large region encompassing many cities for a protracted period of weeks, 
to months. I mean, if you actually think about it, if an EMP was to detonate over the United States in the center, or multiple, we would be facing an all-out collapse. There would be no water, there would be no food, there would be no gasoline, no cars driving. And if your car did somehow make it through the EMP, like if you have an older car or something, how are you going to fill up your gas tank? So basically, you're stuck with what you have at that exact moment when it happens, with millions of people who are going to be hungry and thirsty and trying to find a way to feed themselves. So what do you think about this? Do you think this Chinese balloon was actually a spy balloon? Or do you think, do you believe what the Chinese say that it was a weather balloon? Or do you think it was some sort of nuclear device carrier that was meant to test the waters, so to speak, and see how far it can go before getting shot down? I wanna know your opinion on this whole situation. Please put it in the comments below and let me know how you feel. And I wanna thank you all for watching this video. And until next time, God bless you all.